let's see. What are we gonna talk about on this beautiful autumn day in Hanoi? You see, autumn is the best time of year to come to Northern Vietnam. Oh, look what we have here. We have uh, two vehicles stopped on a road, which there is not enough space for them. What a surprise, not. Okay, right, so autumn is the best time of year for North Vietnam. Uh, I would say anywhere from about the DMZ, like Dong Hoi, yeah, or maybe uh, the Phong Nha Caves, Phong Nha area, north is really beautiful. It's got a distinctive subtropical climate that is different than the north, or sorry, than the, the southern half of, half of Vietnam. And right around this time, September, you start to get some typhoons, and then October, they tend to dry out. And then October, November, and even into December, you're going to have beautiful, sunny, dry, breezy, cool weather, as you can see here. It's uh, probably like 24, 25 degrees Celsius, and about 50 to 60% humidity. Now, for, for many of you in more temperate zones, 25 degrees Celsius sounds very hot, but trust me, when you've been enduring 35 degrees Celsius with 90% humidity, 25 degrees Celsius with 50 to 60% humidity is beautiful. So if you're going to come to Vietnam and specifically, yeah, go the wrong way down the road, please. Uh, if you're specifically going to come to do some motorcycle traveling and touring, uh, in the North Vietnam, the best time to come is from sometime in October until, I'd say, Christmas time. It's still, you're going to have pretty good weather all the way until New Year or, you know, January 1st. So, uh, autumn and early winter, it, you know, the last three months of the year, is the best time to come to North Vietnam. Oh my goodness, this feels so amazing. So anyways, I was going to talk to you specifically about the six basic or six important tips for motorcycle touring in Vietnam. Many people, having seen the uh, very famous British trio back in 15 years ago or more, Top Gear, came here and they uh, toured from Saigon to Ha Long Bay. And so... Uh, many people are kind of inspired to do something similar. And given the fact that Vietnam has got pretty decent roads, wonderful scenery, and lots of small, cheap motorcycles, a lot of people are either buying or renting a bike and traveling around the country. So the six things you need to know if you're going to buy, yeah, look at this, going the wrong way, perfect. If you're going to buy a bike and travel around North Vietnam, do some motorcycle touring, um, first thing I'd recommend is remember to check for Vietnamese holidays. What days are Vietnamese holidays on? Because during those times, like uh, Liberation Day or Independence Day or King Hung Festival uh, and other days as well, these sorts of days, these national holidays, popular tourist destinations are going to be packed absolutely packed. Uh, for example, Mai Cho, see this lady didn't even look, she just pulled out in front of me because nothing exists behind her. Mai Cho is um, a famous tourist destination and um, got people crowding me. I went once on a holiday and it was so packed there was really no place to stay and it was so noisy. People love to sing karaoke, they love to be loud with their friends and party. You know, who can blame them? Time off, working hard, go out with a bunch of friends somewhere, live it up. But uh, even kind of small quiet places can become quickly packed with very noisy uh, large groups of people. So if you want to kind of have a nice quiet countryside pastoral experience in North Vietnam especially, or anywhere in Vietnam, do not 
make sure you don't uh, go on major national holidays. That would be my advice if you're a tourist. The second thing is, uh, wherever you go, to holidays or not, number two, make sure you book or plan in advance. Get your uh, lodging in advance through a number of different websites or uh, an agency or your own research, but uh, book in advance. Do not just show up and expect to be able to find something nice. Chances are you won't. And once you book, Let's say you book a week in advance. The day before you leave, or the day before you're supposed to show up at that place, uh, call them or text them or email them ahead of time. Give them some sort of message and say, you know, my name is so-and-so. I had already booked this room on this date. Uh, please confirm I'm coming tomorrow. And just get a, a response of you like, yes, so we, we, we've got it, thank you. That way, um, because sometimes things get bit disorganized at these smaller uh, places, homestays or smaller hotels. And uh, I've had it on more than one occasion where I was with a group of friends and we all booked ahead, but one of them, the person that was um, you know, in, in charge of the, of the hotel or the homestay just said, oh, well, we didn't have a booking for you, even though we know for a fact he had booked. So always call ahead and confirm ahead of time once you make your plans. All right, number three, avoid buying or maybe using crappy bikes. Now this is a very broad term, but let me give you a quick example. Uh, let's say you're gonna buy a bike and you have the option of buying like a, just a general Honda Wave 110 scooter. And uh, you know, it looks fine, but yeah, it's boring. You wanna have something fun, something cool. So you see this nice or supposedly nice 125, I don't know, bonus or something that is more like a clutch motorcycle and you think, ah, I'd rather have a, a real motorcycle with a clutch and a, a tank between my knees and, and maybe it's like a 150 or a 125, you think that's got to be better than this uh, Honda Wave and it's not much more expensive. Maybe the, the Honda Wave's like, for example, 5 million and this other bike is uh, maybe 15 million. You go, well, yeah, it's it's more expensive, but it's gonna be a better bike. It's gonna be more like a motorcycle. It's gonna be more comfortable, better off-road, more power. But what you don't realize is oftentimes these larger bikes have been so heavily used and they are less likely to have uh, lots of parts available. The parts availability is gonna be lower. Like this bike here, it's a 400. I cannot find parts anywhere outside of the major cities and I usually have to order them in advance okay so if, if this bike breaks down or a more a more exotic bike that isn't a scooter a, a motorcycle that you have which is a bit different a bit bigger and it breaks down out of town you could be screwed but because there will be no parts available and people don't even know how to work on this bike I wouldn't trust anybody in most small towns to even understand how to work on this bike let alone get the parts for it so I have uh, phone numbers and contacts for trucks, recovery trucks, and I'll pay the 100 bucks or so to have my bike trucked all the way back to Hanoi if I need to. But if you don't like to do that, and I understand why you wouldn't, don't get an unusual but what looks like a cooler bike because it's probably an old beat up crappy bike like this bike we see ahead of us. Ah, good old Honda wins. I don't know. Uh, you know, if, if you're worried about reliability, just get a semi-automatic scooter like a Honda Wave, like this one right here, this red one coming up on me. Because they are so easy to fix and they're so reliable and uh, you're just gonna have a better experience unless you can find a very well put together larger bike. Yeah, that, a lot of it depends on your own expertise, knowing what you're getting. Number four. Please, when you're in touristed areas, like out in the countryside, Hazang or Maicho, do not give children handouts. I know you're gonna think me cruel, because the kid's so cute, little kid, little cute tribal kid, he's so cute in his little outfit, oh my God, I gotta give him some candy. Please don't do that, because you're going to train them. First of all, it's probably not very healthy for you to give them junk food. Secondly, you're going to train them that um, anybody who's from, uh, you know, outside, not from their local area, is just a candy machine. That they can just go up, push a button, and get free stuff. It's really not good for the society. It's not good for their mentality. 
uh, you know, it, I, I've been in small villages where this didn't happen and the kids were wonderful. And then I were, I've been in small villages where this did happen and the kids were very demanding, very entitled and always asking for handouts. And it's, you know, always hassling you. They, they couldn't just be friendly like a normal person. They had to demand that you give them free stuff, free candy, etc. So please, I know it makes you feel good because you, I don't know, you have rich person's guilt maybe, but please stop giving cute little children in small villages free junk food all the time. It's bad for their health and it's really bad for them socially. Don't do it. And this is a person talking to you who's spent 25 years in Southeast Asia. I do kind of know what I'm talking about. All right, number five, local hotels are great. Don't be afraid to try them. Oftentimes you might be tempted to only go to the foreign run, uh, you know, hostels that are backpacker hostels that are quite famous online and have a big um, uh, social media presence. And you might be tempted to just avoid um, the smaller Vietnamese hotels that maybe don't even have a Facebook page uh, that you might go into into a city. But I would encourage you to check those local hotels or the Nyang Yi's out. You might be surprised how good they are. They usually will have things like air conditioning, uh, TV, uh, hot running water, and free internet. So and it'll be usually cheaper. You get your own room and your own shower and your complimentary towels and stuff like that and a par nice parking space for cheaper than some of these famous foreign run uh, hostels, backpacker hostels, etc. So don't ignore just local Vietnamese uh, homestays, or not homestays, but um, local Vietnamese hotels in Yang Yi's. They can be quite good. All right, six. Uh, remember, the big highways also have the big buses. Whenever I go north to south in Vietnam, I always skip the major highway, Highway 1, and I usually like to take the Ho Chi Minh Road or take some other smaller, less known road. True, it may be unpaved in sections, but that makes it more interesting, right? And you will even if it's only like 30 kilometers more distance to your destination on these back roads, let's say you're going down to a place that's five hours away and you've got an extra 20 or 30 kilometers added to your trip, you'd be surprised how less, how much less traffic you'll have in these small roads and how much more beautiful it can be. Because uh, the big major highways will have lots of trucks and these guys don't care. They just go and they're dangerous. I would say, Try to look for the smaller, uh, less known roads. Take the road less traveled. Yes, that's my advice. Okay, so my six pieces of advice are, remember, number one, holidays are going to be packed at tourist destinations. Number two, plan ahead and reserve spots. Number three, avoid junker bikes. Number four, please don't give kids stuff. Number five, local hotels can be great. And number six, make sure that you avoid the big roads, which have big buses and trucks. All right, that's my six tips for motorcycle touring. I'm at my garage. Remember, pay attention out there because you know what I say, nobody else is. Have a good afternoon.